Well, hello there, and welcome to chapters 7 and 8 of the Aiden of Oren video podcast. Today, the word of the day is exercise. Yes, I said it. Exercise. Now I'm going to use it in a sentence. I need more exercise because I like to eat pizza. There. That's a good sentence. Now, these are my glasses. This is my coffee. And here we go. We're going to read chapter 7, which is The Legend of Gorgon. Hmm. Here we go. The sound of creaking hinges awakened Aiden with a start. The front door was slowly opening. He could hear footsteps and voices. Aiden jumped out of bed and peeked through his door. He saw the glowing embers in the fireplace. It was very late. Come in, Helphine, said Grandmama. We were expecting you. Aiden peeked as far to his left as he could and was surprised to see Helphine Kintz standing in the doorway. She and her husband, Carl, owned the House of Kintz, which was the town orphanage. Carl also served as the local blacksmith. As far back as Aiden could remember, Helphine had never before attended one of the quilting sessions. Helphine was a stark woman, with large, bony cheeks and haunting, recessed eyes. Her demeanor was pleasant, yet reserved. Grandmama pulled up a chair so that Helphine could join the others in the circle. She seemed out of place and uncomfortable. Relax. You're with friends now, said Glenna, who was sitting beside her. It's times like this. I wish I had taken up quilting she said awkwardly, but we're not here to talk about cloth and thread, are we? I wish we were, said Grandmama. It's because of the hooded man, isn't it? asked Glenna. Aiden's eyes widened, but he didn't dare move. He could hear every word. I've invited Helphine to join us tonight. The time has come, said Grandmama. No, said Winnie. The children are too young. Surely now is not the time for... Winnie, interrupted Glenna. Destiny chooses its own time. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, said Winnie, but I don't have a whole lot of patience with a man who walks through town scaring everybody. You speak bravely from the comfort of your chair, said Grandmama. Maybe you should seek him out and tell him how you feel in person. Winnie simply shrugged her shoulders, trying hard to show that she wasn't afraid. But everyone could see that she was. It's okay to be afraid, said Glenna softly. Does he have a name? asked Nesta. There is a legend, started Helphine, and then she paused. Go on, tell them. It's time for them to know the full story, said Grandmama. Helphine regained her composure and started again. There's a legend of a man from Goth who roams the land. His name is Gorgon. He was once a beautiful child and a son of a king. One day in his travels, he met an imp stirring on the bank of a river. The strange little creature was looking at its reflection in the water and seemed sad. Gorgon knew that imps were best left alone, but his curiosity got the best of him. He approached the little creature slowly, fascinated by its gruesome appearance. Suddenly, the creature turned around its head at Gorgon. The young prince became immediately entranced by the pale blue eyes of the little creature. It asked him a question. What do you see when you look at me? Gorgon laughed at the imp, and in doing so made a horrible mistake. All of the riches could not buy the one thing he needed most at that moment, compassion. Thus, in a poorly timed attempt at humor, he said these fateful words. I see a face that would strike fear into any man, 
you obviously have no friends. The little creature looked back into the river and said, So shall it be, so shall it be. When Gorgon knelt down by the river to get a drink of water, his heart turned cold as he saw his reflection. The young prince's face was now the face he had scorned. It was too horrible even for him to gaze upon. He hurried back to his homeland, only to be shunned by his friends and even by his own family. He became an outcast, a nomad. His heart turned black. His bitterness turned him into a life of pure hatred. Aiden, still peeking through the door, could not believe what he was hearing. How very sad, said Nesta. Don't be sad, warned Helfine. Be afraid. Whenever the hooded man appears, destruction soon follows. There is no good in him. I fear for the child of Orin. Why is he here then? He did not come on his own accord. He was sent on a mission. Who sent him? Nesta began fidgeting. The Lord of Dunjon, she replied coldly. No, shouted Winnie. It's too soon. Saren, said Helfine abruptly, how old is the boy now? He turns thirteen in two days, said Grandmama as she began to wring her hands nervously. The time has come, Helfine said. If the Lord of Dunjon can stop the prophecy from being fulfilled, peace will never be restored and all will be lost. Aidan's eyes widened with fear and excitement. Were they really talking about him? Who was the Lord of Dunjon? Do they? Do any of you remember the prophecy? Asked Helfine as she looked around the room. The boy must find the elves, and soon let me refresh your memories. When the hooded man first appears, a child will arise of thirteen years, a child of fire, of ore and pride, wisdom and a warrior at his side to travel up the way of sorrow as longest day is nigh the morrow. From elves to learn the ancient ways and secrets told from yonder days, destined to set the guardians free to harvest peace from sea to sea. That doesn't make any sense, cried Nesta. How can he possibly find the elves? She popped up out of her chair and began pacing around the room, no one even know if they really exist. Oh, they exist, replied Glenna. Nesta was beginning to lose control. No one has ever seen an elf. I have, said Glenna, in my dreams. Aiden could hardly contain himself behind the door. Was he supposed to look for the mysterious elves? His imagination began to get the better of him. The mountain will be his beacon, said Glenna in the map, his compass. Nesta, we've all known for a long time that this day would come. Don't worry. All of the women soberly nodded. Nesta stepped back down on her chair and tried to calm down. I just don't know about these so-called prophecies. We're trusting something that we do not fully understand. We have no choice, said Helfine. Sometimes life demands a leap of faith. Saren, is the child ready? Grandmama cupped her hands on her lap and looked into them for what seemed like a long time. Then she spoke words that Aiden would never forget. My friends, Aiden has the courage of a lion, the spirit of the wind, and the wisdom of a king. He is ready for the journey. Aiden put his hand over his mouth so that no one would hear him gasp. Surely they weren't talking about him. The courage of a lion, he thought to himself, half amused. He couldn't even stand up to the Braddock brothers. This didn't make any sense. I don't want to alarm anyone, said Glenna, as she got up from her chair to pour herself a fresh cup of tea. But the summer solstice is only four days away. What's the summer solitude? asked Nesta awkwardly. It's the summer solstice, Nesta. It's the day of the year that the sun shines the longest. All of the days before and after the summer solstice are shorter. Oh, said Nesta. Four days, 
sighed Grandmama. So little time. Four days until what? He pressed his face harder to the door, trying desperately to hear everything that was being said. What journey? However, the voices were starting to sound distant. The light in the fireplace room started to dim, and everything was going dark. Hmm. That's chapter seven. Let's move on to chapter eight. This one's called Mackenzie's Gift. I like this one. Aiden, let's go, shouted a little voice in his ear. What? Aiden sat straight up in bed. It was morning. The sun had just risen and was shining directly in his eyes. He could hear Mackenzie and Lily giggling in the background. How did I get here? He asked incredulously. I, I was over there by the door. What's all the racket? Asked an irritated Charles from his perch. Can't you see we're trying to get some sleep? Good morning, Aiden, said Grandmama as she entered the room. If I remember right, you are going to play out by the meadow today. Oh, he said, still trying to get the cobwebs out of his head. Yes, but Grandmama, I wanted to speak to you about, we'll talk later. Your friends are here and anxious to go out and play, said Grandmama. I can't think of a better day for the three of you to be together. Grandmama gave him an approving kiss on the forehead and left his room. Aiden jumped out of bed and prepared for breakfast. Outside, the warm summer air smelled fresh. Lily and Mackenzie were in the best of moods, but not Aiden. He was haunted by what he heard last night. Had he dreamed it all? Was any of it real? He had so many questions. Somehow he knew that from this day forward, his life would never be the same. Let's hurry to the meadow, said Mackenzie, as she took his hand. I'd love to hear a new story. I think that the excitement from yesterday's adventure should last us for a while, Mackenzie, Lily said. Let's not ask too much of Aiden. He did almost get beat up. Mackenzie picked up a stick and waved it in the air. Next time I see that mean man, I'll poke his eye out. Easy does it, said Aiden, as he pulled the stick out of Mackenzie's hand. You'll poke my eye out at that thing if you're not careful. They walked until they reached the top of a rising hill, where they had a scenic view of the country. This spot was their sanctuary. Do you want to play hide-and-seek? asked Mackenzie as she tucked at Aiden's arm. Mackenzie, said Lily, can't you see that something is on his mind? Anyway, you know it's no fun to play hide and seek with Aiden. He's too good. I've never known anyone who could hide like he can. It's not fair, really. Are you saying that I'm a cheater? Aiden laughed. Let's wrestle, squealed Mackenzie as she ran over and grabbed Aiden's legs, knocking both him and Lily to the ground. The three of them wrestled, laughing hysterically. Lily somehow managed to free herself from the wrestling match. Aiden, I have something for you, she said, sitting down with her basket on her lap. What's in the basket? asked Mackenzie. You'll see. Lily reached inside and pulled out a beautiful leather necklace. I've been working on this for the past few weeks. I thought Aiden might like it. Oh, thank you said Aiden as he gave her a big hug. What is this for? Well, tomorrow is your birthday. I made this for you to wear around your neck. I've got something for you too, chimed Mackenzie as she reached into her pocket. Another gift? Did the two of you plan this? No, said Mackenzie as she dug deeper into her pocket. Wait, it's in here somewhere. Dirt, small stones, and half of a beetle began to fall out of her pocket. I got it! Mackenzie proudly pulled her hand out of her pocket and presented her gift to Aiden. What is it? asked Lily. I can't even see anything except a pile of dirt. Aiden sifted through the dirt in Mackenzie's hand. I feel something, he said, startled. Aiden slowly removed something solid from her hand. I hope it's not the other half of that beetle. That's disgusting, said Lily with a giggle. Mackenzie just watched and waited. 
A rock, Aiden exclaimed. It's no ordinary rock, Mackenzie said as she puffed out her little chest. It's the prettiest rock in the world. Aiden wiped the dusty rock on his pants. Then he polished it up with his shirt. To get a good look at it, Aiden held it up to the sunlight. Oh, cried Lily. Whatever in the world is that? Aiden was speechless. The rock was beautiful. It was flat and translucent red, just like a ruby. But even more amazing was how the sunlight, when it hit the rock, split into seven small beams. Look how it divides the light, said Aiden. I didn't know it could do that, Mackenzie said. I just thought it was pretty. Where did you get it? asked Lily. That is the most beautiful rock I have ever seen. I told you it was the prettiest rock in the world, said Mackenzie with a big grin. I found it in the rubble by the Hall of Judges in the village. It was just too pretty to leave laying on the ground, so I put it in my pocket. Why didn't you say anything? inquired Aiden. Because I forgot about it, said Mackenzie, but now I can give it to you as a gift, too, just like Lily did. Thank you both, said Aiden, as he leaned over and hugged his friends. Now I have something for you. Something for us? asked Lily suspiciously. Yes, said Aiden with a big grin. I have a new story for you. And that's going to be chapter 10. But that's next time. So, have a good rest of the day. And we'll see you next time for a chapter called The Wish Poem. You want to hear that one? Bye-bye now. Be good.